the notion that tax cuts alone will solve all our problems, that we can address this enormous crisis with half steps and piecemeal measures and tinkering around the edges, that we can ignore fundamental challenges like the high cost of health care and still expect our economy and our country to thrive. I reject these theories, and, by the way, so did the American people when they went to the polls in November and voted resoundingly for change. So, so I urge members of Congress to act without delay. No plan is perfect, and all of us together. Democrats and Republicans should work to make it stronger. But let's not make the perfect the enemy of the essential. Let's show people all over our country who are looking for leadership, who are desperate for leadership right now, that in difficult times, we're equal to the task. Let's give America's families the support they need to weather this crisis. In the end, that's all that people like the Seacrests are looking for, the chance to work hard, and to have that hard work translate into a good life for their children. Now, I'm, I'm pleased to report uh, that the Seacrest story had a happy ending. It turned out that uh, Gregory's two sons were eligible for S-chip, and they are now fully covered, much to his relief and his wife's relief. I think Gregory put it best when he said, kids, look at us and think that we will take care of them. That's, every parent here has that experience. You look at your children, and you know that they're looking back at you and they're saying, you're going to take care of me, aren't you? That's our job, to keep them health, healthy and, and to keep them safe and to let them dream as big as their dreams will take. And that's what I think about when I tuck my own girls into bed each night. And that's what I want for every child, every family in this nation. That's why it's so important that Congress passes our recovery plan so we can get to work rebuilding America's health care system. It won't be easy. It won't happen all at once. But this bill that I'm about to sign, that wasn't easy either. <laughs> it didn't happen all at once either. And yet, here it is, waiting for me to sign. The bill I signed today is a critical first step. So I want to thank all of the state and local officials, all the advocates and ordinary Americans across this great country who fought so hard to get it passed. I want to personally thank every single member of Congress who is here, a bipartisan group who worked tirelessly. Worked tirelessly for so long that we could see this day. And I want you all to know that I am confident that if we work together, if we come together, we can finally achieve what generations of Americans have fought for and fulfill the promise of health care in our time. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.
And that is President Obama signing the bill that will expand health care to an additional 4 million children, saying this is good. Now the bill passed 290 to 135 in the House. It will expand the Children's Health Insurance Program, or SCHIP, by about 35 million over five years. And if you're wondering how we're going to pay for that, well, it is financed with a 62 cent per pack increase in the federal tax on cigarettes. Now, SCHIP currently covers more than 6 million children whose parents earn too much to qualify for Medicaid and can't afford private insurance. President Obama heralding this as a bipartisan success story, even though most Democrats voted for it and most Republicans voted against it. But there was some crossover. So President uh, Obama there just uh, celebrating, signing the uh, bill into law. And if you want to continue watching, no, looks like actually we're going to lose this in a couple of seconds.